We're working on the sauce, uh, the sauce Walker interview, especially right now. It's a good time. We got to talk to Sauce Walker. We got to find out what the smoke with Young Thug is. <laughs> Very Not important. Dog, you got any insight great. into that that you could tell me about what, what's going to happen with that situation? You're you might you're out there. You're in the scene. You might know what's going on. Man, uh, you know, for the most part, man, you know, it's I understand what what Thug coming from. You know what I'm saying? But um, shit, Walk don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know him enough to know he don't care. So it's, it's going to be a one shit. of those situations where they Young don't have Thug to. Kind of gets treated like a god in these streets, but Sauce Walker apparently Sauce don't Walker give two don't shits. Care, man. No. Like, we in Houston, we don't care. Before we even get into like the beginning of your career or whatever, tell me about what, what possessed you to write that song uh, about that freestyle and where, what place in your life you were at at that moment man around that time man that's when i was doing like viral freestyles about anything that was going on crazy in the internet you know what i'm saying um right. i had big singles that were like regional you know what i'm saying but in between then i would still do freestyles about current events and all that you know what i'm saying but the bigger i got as an artist i stopped doing it because rappers don't have a sense of humor like that you know mm. what i'm saying like Everybody else think it's funny, but because I am also a rapper, they take it as a shot, you know mm. what I'm saying? So I just fell back from that, you know, and my dog, uh, Remix God, you know, he really does that now, you know what I'm saying? He make the beat about a situation that's going on, you know what I'm saying? So he kind of, that's his lane, and I left it alone because it's like, you know, it'd be, I, I, I'd be in these rapper cities, you know what I'm saying? But was that your there. initial come up? No, nah, I had like like three different fan bases. Like, you know, I had like my ratchet, you know what I'm saying, club music fan base. Mm -hmm. And I got my fan base, you know what I'm saying, my three six mafia fan base, Gangsta Boo, like my big sister. I got a you know, a real close affiliation with them. So she gave you a lot of looks early on and she just helped you out or what? Not early, early on, but me and her, when we first did a project together in 2014, that was the biggest look blog wise I mm. had. You know, I never had a publicist, you know what I'm saying? And when that came out, it was like one of the best albums of the year from Rolling Stone, MTV, WXL, At the time that was that. the hustle. Get a publicist and get on all the blogs that was the new get on world star and dj academics man the, not that was the old dj that academics was the, the thing about it is i'm gonna say a publicist can't help you today man because it's you and act right now, <laughs> you and act and if y'all ain't tuned in man. and that's just crazy it's just like a lot of rappers dm me and they like big rappers they be like man b king you hard man your shit hard i'd be like i didn't know you knew me Mm. Just like you told me about some shit in 2015. That's your first time hearing me. I had no idea. That I mean, was the year on that? 2015? 2000, that's when he had that fight in the mall. Okay. So I did it right then, like All the right. next day. That you was pretty saying? fucking funny. That Actually, honestly, that was a smart move. And when There's a lot of kids on YouTube and shit now who mm. sort of came up and that was their thing. Is that they fucking just found some shit to do some viral freestyles about. When you think about it, you were hella early on that wave. Yeah, yeah. I was doing that in um, it's a complex article about that in uh, 2013. 13, I was doing that in 2011 and 12. And, mm. you know, I was, like I said, but the bigger, I got I have real music too, mm. like songs that have charted and shit like that. And the bigger I got as an artist, you know, these rappers would hit these songs on World Star. Cause every time I did it, World Star would post it. Mm. They'd be like, who the fuck is this nigga trying to take a shot at me and shit? And I'd be <laughs> like, man, I, it was just a joke, but I get it. Because it wouldn't be funny to me if you, I'm lying, it would be funny to me, but, you know, <laughs> some people, you know. So tell me where you're coming from. You're originally from Houston? I'm from Houston, north side, Studywood. You know what I'm saying? That's a uh, hood on the north side. And um, yeah, north and side of Houston. What was your upbringing like? Upbringing, man, for the most part, man. I'm from the hood, but I ain't a street nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't walking around with pistols and all that. I wasn't, you no know, hitting licks and shit like that. I said I was hitting lick. I wasn't hitting licks. Liquor? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, like, you, know, you just dabble into some bullshit. You know, but I wasn't like no gangster. Oh, you you know hit a saying? lick, but a, a, a yeah, singular, was, not yeah, plural. Yeah, it wasn't, okay. no, it wasn't no, like, you know, but, you know. I would hit like, the lick, as in I just yeah. drank a bunch of Hennessy during that fucking Spice One interview, and that was my equivalent <laughs> of hitting the lick for you the It was night. crazy. I didn't know who that was until, like, he started saying something about 94. I was like, okay, you got to be an OG type dude. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Talking about uh, NWA and shit. It's weird because I found out, like, when I found out about him was way later in his own career because later on he started doing a bunch of shit with Tupac, and that's how I found out about him. But I was still, like, 11 when I found out about him, so it was kind of crazy to go revisit his old albums and shit and sort of learn some history and shit. And then we got mm -hmm. drunk and just fucking whatever, you know? <laughs> like I said, I never really knew his music like that, but, you know, I was a real big fan of, you know, 
LA hip hop when mm-hmm. I was young, you know. So I, I know, Minister Society soundtracks and shit like that. So I, yeah. his name, I knew what it was, you know. But you know, shout out to him though. For sure. So how'd you get started in the rap game in general? In the rap game, or maybe uh, start making music. I've been making music since I was ten years old. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But um, I didn't start making club music. I say the 2009 is 2008. You know, back in like 2005 and shit, I was making like shit like Jeezy. I was making street shit, and when Lil John was popping, I was making crunk shit and all that, just trying to find my sound. You know what I'm saying? In uh, 2010, when I found it, and that's when I started blowing up. Really? In my region. So what was it like? Really, you that was your way in the game though? Was making sort of like club music? No, it was um yeah club music. Like um before me, Houston didn't really have a club sound. You know, we had songs about real street shit that you had to play in the club. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you know, before me, Houston didn't really have a a distinct club music sound. You know what I'm saying? With a, a few exceptions, you got. Uh, UGK, Let Me See It, and, mm-hmm. you know, a little old Bag Bag, you know, but those were older songs, you know what I'm saying? So when I came out, it gave Houston more of an energetic sound, you know, so now you got the, the, the Chitter to Connect, Flick of the Wrist, you got mm-hmm. the, the sauce movement with more energy, you got, um, you know, everything that's, you know, all the way up to my dog Fast Lane. Uh, Houston didn't really have a club sound before me, you know. Mm-hmm. And I ain't saying that they was inspired by me. I'm just saying before me, everybody was like sipping lean, real slow music. Yeah. You never sip lean? No. Never got into it. I'm scared I might like this shit. What Sauce Walker <laughs> wouldn't give you any? <laughs> hey man, they 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 like this shit though. I'm gonna be real with you. One night I was in the club, or not the club, but I was in the studio with Rizzo and Sauce Walker. That's my dog. And they were trying to get some lean and they couldn't get lean at the moment. They maybe mm-hmm. had to wait a couple hours or something. And man, let me tell you, it, it's, see, it's, see, you rappers, see a different side of it right then because they wanted that goddamn lean and they were not happy until Houston they got it. Houston rappers are spoiled with lean because mm-hmm. if we want it, it's right there. Really? It, it, it's just it, flooded the streets it's, out it's, there? It's, it's it's like that in Houston. If you mm. want it, you can get it. You can get it at a, at a school. You can get it at a strip club. You can get it on anywhere. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, a lot of rappers come to my city. They hit me up. Hey, man, I, I need some lean. I need some syrup. I'll be like, man. What are you telling I tell them to hit up my other rapper friends that got it because I don't I, I don't have it. I right. can't just give it to you, but I know who got it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I know my rap partners who got it. You know what I'm saying? So... Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. What, what, what do you feel like have been like the biggest moments in your career outside of the the Gangsta Boo project? The fucking for me personally, the the Sauce Walk Up fucking freestyle. <laughs> you know what? A lot of people found out about me through that. You really? know what I'm saying? A lot of um. I just com- went back and listened to it earlier today, and that shit was honestly kind of hard. <laughs> a lot of uh comedians online, right? You know what I'm saying? A lot of your know, Instagram comedians, they're like, man, I've been a fan of your music since you dropped that freestyle. I'm like, what? Like that's like the most unimportant song to me in my career, but a lot yeah. of people found out about me. And not a, not really even a memorable fight, to be totally yeah. honest. It was just sort of a whatever ass little fight. It just caught people off guard to see a rapper fighting. That's all. And to like, see rappers and, don't fight. And no to more. see somebody immediately make a freestyle about it. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's all it was, man. But memorable moments in my career, man. Um, I'd say, man, like that Gangsta Boo project, you know, this Club God 6 I just dropped. I've mm. never got a reaction from an album this big ever with no publicists, no nothing. Like, blogs are just picking it up. Like, my fans are really supporting it, you know what I'm saying? They, you know, they, the stuff I'm talking about on that album, you know, I'm more known for the club music. So when they hear things about, like, you know, the whole Travis Scott thing, like, it throw a lot of people off, like, whoa, you can rap rap? And I'd be like, man, my fans know I can rap rap, but, so, you know, if you don't know, you just come in the club. Let's go into detail about that a little bit. What's the Travis Scott thing? He just did some fake shit, man. What and do you mean? Well, okay, well, uh, people who don't know, you know what I'm saying? I did Astro World. I made Astro World into an album concept first. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And the point I try to make to people is Ash the World in Houston was a theme park. And that meant a lot to a lot of people in Houston. You know what I'm saying? So Astro doesn't belong to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to keep it to myself or nothing. But I put it in album form first and put it out. And he knew that. And I'm not saying that he should have asked me or nothing. 
but the conversation could have been had. 